Hi everyone, I'm Emily from the Milwaukee Public Library, and thank you for joining me today for this Simple Stream project. Now normally I work at the Central Library Children's Room, but today I'm presenting this program from my home. So even though we can't be with you in person right now, we're excited that we can continue to read, create, and discover with you all summer long and from a safe distance virtually. So this project today, we're going to be experimenting with water filtration, so making dirty water cleaner. Um, just a note, though, that the water will not become so clean that you can drink it at the end. It'll still be kind of dirty and gross, and I think you'll be able to see that. However, we will also be able to see it visibly becoming cleaner, and that will really show the importance of water filtration and safe drinking water. This project's appropriate for kids of all ages and their families, but we will be using scissors or a knife at one point, um, so grown-ups, please assist your children with that, and kids, please do not use scissors or knives on your own without some grown-ups help. All right, so here's what you're going to need for this project today, and I hope it's all stuff that you can find pretty easily in and around your home. So first off, a clear plastic bottle. This is just an old water bottle. Now, this would be something that you would typically throw into your recycling bin, um, but just pull that out and use that. Maybe give it a quick wash and should be good to go. Clear is better. It doesn't have to be clear, but when it's clear, you can see the science working. You can see, can see the filtration, so that makes it really cool. So a clear plastic bottle. A pretty sturdy and larger glass glass or pitcher or what I use here is a vase. So again, also see-through so you can see the water filtration and pretty sturdy because this is what we'll be pouring the dirty water into so we want it to not spill. And dirty water. Um, how do you make dirty water you might wonder? Well, hopefully pretty easily again in and around your house. I've been doing a lot of planting in my yard and digging up some spots um, where I've got a lot of dirt and so I've just been saving that for future plantings but for this I was able to just put it into an old water bottle put some water in there straight from the garden hose and if I give it a good shake you can see that it is nice and dirty and some of that um, dirt has kind of settled at the bottom there so I probably have to give it a real good shake to mix it up and I think this approximates pretty well what kind of groundwater unfiltered unfiltered water would look like before it's safe drinking water for people. Then we're going to need a variety of filters and I hope that you can just you know bring together a lot of materials or just to do some experimenting. So paper type filters like a coffee filter, uh, a tissue, a paper towel, cotton balls or cotton pads, um, so any of that kind of stuff like papery products or fabric-y products and then things like pebbles, stones, bark, sand, um, could be things again in your yard or outside in the driveway, but also could be like decorative um, pebbles that you might put in an aquarium. I have some uh, sandbox sand that I'll be using. So any of that variety of stuff and we'll experiment with you know different techniques too. So go ahead and gather all that stuff up and we'll get started. I was inspired to do this project after reading this book right here, I Am Farmer, Growing an Environmental Movement in Cameroon. It's a picture book biography that I got from the library, and it's the story of Tantu Nuforba, this person right here, a real life person. And he's from a northwest uh, Cameroon rural farming village, and all his life he was fascinated by gardening, how plants grow, um, and that kind of delicate balance between earth, sun, and water, and how they all come together to make plants grow. His family was very poor, but yet they managed to scrape enough money together to buy him some gardening tools when he was young, um, and he just continued to garden, and he would record the progress of everything that he planted, and he was very kind of scientific and methodical about it. At school, this kind of made him a target of teasing and bullying. People nicknamed him Farmer, which he still goes by today, Farmer Tanto. Um, but it was meant to be kind of a shameful, teasing nickname because in their estimation, a farmer was poor, uneducated, and wouldn't really amount to much or had much success in life. But he really embraced it, and he did something that I think is kind of cool and funny. He actually created a shirt that said Farmer on it, kind of like a name tag, and he ended up wearing that to school until he graduated, um, just really embracing that name of far, um, farmer instead of uh, you know using it to be embarrassed or sh ashamed. 
Um, he continued to garden as he grew older. He enrolled in environmental sciences and agricultural classes at a local college. But then he got sidetracked because he became pretty sick from a waterborne illness called typhoid. He got really, really sick. It took him almost seven years to recover, kind of, you know, long period of his life where he was sick from this waterborne illness, drinking contaminated water. Um, but as he got better, he was able to go to the United States and study uh, further, but he always wanted to come back home to Cameroon, to his village, and, you know, put his practices uh, to the good of the village and his people. So he created rain gardens, water catchments and wells, uh, safe walking paths for folks who were carrying water with railings and ramps for folks um, who had disability or mobility issues, um, and so much more. He did, just did so many great things um, as an innovator and scientist. Um, but I just was kind of struck by how he was sidetracked um, by that waterborne illness and how that kind of guided his life and his purpose to bring safe, usable water to his people. And so I wanted to do a little bit of practicing here today with water filtration. So let's get started. All right, let's get going on our experiment. So I began with my clear plastic bottle. Remember, clear is better because then you can see the filtration happening. And I just cut it in half, cut the bottom part off right here. And you can put that aside for later or put it in your recycling bin. And we want the part with the cap. And keep that cap on so we can try to keep it from getting too messy. But you can also cover your surface with paper or tablecloth or something to keep it a little bit cleaner. Definitely probably gonna spill a tiny bit of dirt or sand here. All right. Then we're going to begin layering in here, our filtration. And the first thing you'll need is a paper product. So the first one I'm going to try is a coffee filter. And the next one I'll try is a paper towel. But any kind of paper product filter will work that you've got at home. So cotton balls, uh, napkin, tissue, anything like that. So just experiment with what you got laying around. Next, we'll use a fine um, organic material and for both I'm going to use just this sand right here. Sand box sand. And then we'll use a coarser, so bigger um, organic material. For the first one, I'm going to use some bark that I just got from my flower beds around the house. I can also find some sticks or twigs some rocks, pebbles, marbles, dried beans, lots of different stuff you could try. And then for the next one, that coarser material, I'll use some gravel, which again was just around my house. Remember, best part, you need your dirty water. You can see it's been sitting for a while. Sediment is settling down there at the bottom, so let's give it a shake. And again, that was just dirt from my garden because I've been planting stuff. Put a little bit of dirt at the bottom, filled it up with the garden hose, ready to go. And then you'll want something sturdy to actually pour the water, dirty water into through your filter. I'm using just a glass jar that I usually use for a flower vase. So sturdier is better, and again, clearer is good too, so that you can see the filtration happening. Okie dokie, let's begin building our layered filter. So again, top of our bottle with the cap still on. Just gonna put the coffee filter down at the bottom part. Make sure it opens up so you can fill it with sand. Here we go, pretty good. Mashed against the sides there. Next, my sand. A few scoops to just kind of fill the bottom. And I'll show you what that looks like. And then the coarser material, so the bark. Obviously need some smaller pieces here to fit in. And I want to pretty well cover the sand layer. So always think your finer material on the bottom, your coarser material on the top layer. The 
this would be a good place for some stones or rocks. Of course, there's material there. Let me show you up close what that looks like. Okay. So, we're going to hope that the paper layer here at the bottom, when I pull off the lid, that will keep all the sand from pouring through into our clean bottle. So you can see that. And let's go ahead and pour the dirty water. I'm going to give it one last shake. I'm going to get that dirt moving around. Pour it right in there. Little kids, get your grown-ups help with this so you don't end up with a huge mess. And you can see it. I'm going to fill it right about to that top layer. You can see it coming through. Drip, 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 through all those layers. Pour a little more water as that works its way through. A little bit more. I'll do even a little bit more. Dripping through, coming through nicely. Now after we do our next one, experimenting with slightly different materials, I'll save this water, and then I'll save the water from the next one and we can compare them and see if one seemed to work a little bit better. Okay, it's kind of fun just to watch it drip. Okay, let's go ahead and try our second experiment with slightly different materials. Again, you need your top of your bottle. You can use this new bottle. I just took a moment, a break here, and cleaned out all my stuff. So I'm just reusing the same one from earlier. Keep your cap on to avoid a huge mess. And then we're going to start with our paper filter layer. Remember, we used a coffee filter, and this time I'm going to use a paper towel, and I've just cut it into a smaller square so that we don't take up as much space in the bottle and we can see a little bit better. And I'm gonna put it on down there, kind of like we did with the coffee filter. Push it against the sides. And this is where you can be thinking about which one do you think of those two paper filters is going to filter dirty water better and why? Start to form your hypothesis. I'm gonna use my fine organic materials, sand, just like with our first one, and fill in the bottom. Pretty good even layer. And then I'm gonna use my coarse organic material. First time we used pretty coarse organic material, which was the bark, but now we're gonna go for something a little finer here, and this is gravel. This would be a good place you know, for pebbles, marbles, dried beans, so something a little bit smaller than bark or big stones. And I'm gonna fill a layer above the sand, mostly so I can't see the sand layer anymore. So until that's pretty covered. And again, be thinking, how would this compare to the bark? Filter better, filter worse. I'll show you what that looks like. So I covered the sand where I can't see any sand now. I'm gonna bring back my sturdy glass jar. Put that where we can see it. And I took a moment to clean it out too so we didn't have any dirty residue that might kind of throw off our comparison. And then again, the dirty water, and I'm gonna give it a shake because it's, it's settled while I was washing stuff. Okay. I'm gonna remove the cap. On there like a funnel. Take my dirty water and pour that right over top. And I always fill it till I don't just 
you know, splash a ton of water in there till, they're, till it's over filling. I give it some time to work through those layers. So I always fill it up to right over the top layer. You can see it dripping through already. And once it kind of goes past that top layer with the gravel, I'm going to fill it again. Yeah, it's dripping through pretty good. And I saved the water from our bark and coffee filter layer. And we'll end the video by comparing the two and see if one looks markedly different or not. A little bit more so we have a good amount, a good volume of water to compare for both. So, this is where, in just a moment, I'll pause the video and wait for it to fully drip through. But you can go back as you needed. If I was making my way a little too quickly through this video, you can go back if you need to. It's also where you can start to form your hypothesis about which two experiments, which of the two experiments you think will have filtered the water to make it cleaner. All right, I'll be back with you in just a moment to do our comparison. Okay, let's go ahead and do our comparison here. So if you remember, we started out with really dirty, murky water. Putting in the sunlight there so you can see all that stuff floating around. Our first experiment was with coffee filter, sand, and bark. And our second was with paper towel, sand, and gravel. Now if you look at these two, they look pretty similar. However, I let them sit for a while because I thought this would really give us a good indication of which one, if either of them, filtered better. So our first one, if you look at the bottom, you can see all that sediment that was still floating around that settled to the bottom. Okay, this one's been setting for a while too. And if you look there, not nearly as much stuff floating around. Not all that sediment at the bottom. So even though they're both murky, I would say that the one with the, the gravel and the paper towel filtered better. Of course, neither one is clean enough to drink, but one definitely did get a little bit cleaner. Cool. Thank you for watching today. I hope you had fun experimenting with water filtration. Remember to continue to check out our website at mpl.org for more great free fun and educational programs for kids and their families. And remember, if you want to read this book, I Am Farmer, Growing an Environmental Movement in Cameroon, it's available for check out through our curbside locations. So again, check our website for information about that. It's also available as an audiobook and an ebook on Hoopla, which is accessible to you for free with your library card. All right, also please remember to sign up for summer reading. Kids, you can be a super reader, but there is something for everybody from babies through adults. And you can sign up for that at mpl.org slash summer reading. Again, thank you for joining me. See you next time. Bye.